Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to solve quadratic equations using the square root property and also completing the square. So from the previous video, we talked about what are quadratic equations, and we also talked about quadratic equations in general form so that we could solve them by using factoring. Well, now we're going to talk about how do you solve quadratic equations using the square root property? How do you solve quadratic equations using the completing the square method? So as we go through this video on solving using the square root property and completing the square, keep in mind that when you're solving types of equations, including quadratic equations, that zeros, roots, and x-intercepts are all synonymous. The zero of a function are the roots or the solutions to a quadratic equation. So if you have the y value equal to zero. Well, if you ever hear the word real zeros or real solutions to an equation, those are the x-intercepts on the graph of a function. So let's talk about solving quadratic equations by the square root property. We actually have used the square root property once before when we were talking about whether an equation is a function or not. So let's talk about what the square root property says. The square root property states that if you have an algebraic expression that's being represented as the u in this case, and d, the number d, is a non-zero number, then you have u squared equals d will have exactly two solutions, just like what we would expect with a quadratic equation. Well, how do you find the two solutions? If you have one side of the equation being squared, so keep in mind that u is an algebraic expression, it could be x squared or it could be 2x plus 1 in parentheses squared. So you have something that's being squared on one side, and the other side of the equation is a non-zero number. You take the square root on one side of the equation to cancel out the square power, but then you have to do the same thing on the other side of the equation as well. But keep in mind, whenever you use a square root to cancel out a square power, you have a plus or minus that you need to insert. So that means you have u equals, after you cancel out the square with the square root, you have plus or minus square root of d, which means that u equals the positive square root of d, or u equals the negative square root of d. So that's where you get the two solutions. So let's do a few examples on where we can actually use the square root property to solve quadratic equations. So number one, let's solve this equation first, just to get an idea of how the square root property can work. 2x squared equals 18. Well, you can't use the square root property unless one side of the equation is being squared already. So notice that the x is being squared, but the 2 is not. So isolate the x squared term on one side of the equation. That means take both sides of the equation and divide by 2. So you get x squared is equal to 18 divided by 2 is 9. And now it's of this form, where you can use the square root property. One side is being squared, so it's x that's being squared, and the other side of the equation is a non-zero number, like 9. So now take the square root on both sides of the equation. So you'll have the square root of x squared is equal to plus or minus. Keep in mind that whenever you take the square root, you need to put the plus or minus in yourself. So that way you get the two solutions, square root of 9. And so the square root will cancel out the square power, and you'll just have x is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 9, that does simplify. That is 3. So plus or minus 3, which means that there are two solutions, x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. So two solutions. Now keep in mind that you could solve this equation by using factoring method, where you have one side of the equation equal to zero, so subtract the 18, you could factor out the GCF and then use a difference of squares formula to get the same answers. But the squirt property might be a little bit faster this, in this case. So now that we know how the squirt property works, let's try a different problem. Number two says x minus three, all in parentheses being squared, is equal to 36. So make sure that you isolate the algebraic expression that is raised to the second power. This happens before you use the square root property, so that way one side of the equation is just being squared by itself. So this equation already is of that form. The left side is x minus 3 that's being squared, and the other side of the equation is not 0. So I can take the square root on both sides of the equation to be able to cancel out the square power, 
So square root on the left side, square root of x minus 3 in parentheses squared is equal to plus or minus square root of 36. So the square root and the square will cancel each other out. And so the left side of the equation just becomes x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 36. That is a whole number. It's 6 that's being squared to give you 36. So plus or minus 6. So now, let's see. You actually do have two solutions again. You'll have x minus 3 equals positive 6 or x minus 3 equals negative 6. Don't add the 3 and make it plus or minus 9. That would be incorrect. So let's write it out. Write out what the two equations would be, x minus 3 equals 6, or x minus 3 equals negative 6. So that way you can solve both equations separately. So add 3 on both equations, you'll get x equals 9, or x equals negative 3. So those are your two solutions this time. And keep in mind, you can always check your answer. If you plug in x equals 9 or x equals negative 3 back into the original equation, it should make the equation true. If it doesn't, then go back and check your work. All right, one more, number three. This time the left side of the equation is 2x plus 3, in parentheses, all squared, and the right side of the equation is 27. Isolate the algebraic expression. That is raised to the second power. Okay, so in other words, if there was like a 3 in front of this parentheses that was not being squared, you had to divide by 3 first. But since it's just 2x plus 3 that's being squared, it's already of the form that we need it to be for the square root property. So take the square root on both sides of the equation. Square root of the left side, so square root of 2x plus 3 all squared is equal to plus or minus square root of 27. So now the square root will cancel out the square power again. And so the left side of the equation is 2x plus 3 and then the right side of the equation. So this is the first time we've noticed that the right side is not going to be just a whole number. There isn't a whole number squared to give you 27. So let's just keep it as plus or minus square root of 27 for now. And we have to do a little bit of scratch work. So we need to simplify the square root of 27. And here's how. So the square root of 27, you need to think of it as it's a square root. So what is the largest square number that will go into 27 evenly? Well, 9 is a square number, and it goes into 27. So 9 times 3 is 27. And so now you can use a property with involving radicals that the square root of a product, you can take the square root of each factor and multiply your answers. And so square root of 27 is really 3 times the square root of 3. So square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 3 just stays as it is. Let's go back to the equation to make that replacement. So the left side of the equation is 2x plus 3. The right side of the equation is a plus or minus 3 square root of 3 for the square root of 27. Make sure you simplify the square roots if you can. So just like the last problem, that means you have two different equations that you need to solve. You have 2x plus 3 equals positive 3 square root 3 or 2x plus 3 equals negative 3 square root 3. So solve each of these equations separately. So on both equations, make sure you subtract 3 on both sides of the equation. So 2x equals negative 3 plus 3 squared 3, or 2x equals negative 3 minus 3 squared 3. And now notice if you want to get x by itself, you have to divide both sides of the equation by 2 with both equations. So you'll find out that x is equal to negative 3 plus 3 squared 3, and then this is all divided by 2. Or, same thing on the other side of the equation, negative 3 minus 3 squared 3, and then this is also all divided by 2 to get x by itself. So these may not be nice answers like the last couple examples, but you still have two solutions. So the solutions are negative 3 plus 3 squared 3 all over 2, and then negative 3 minus 3 squared 3 all over 2. Notice that the only thing that changes between the two solutions is one has a plus square root and one has a minus square root. So negative 3 plus the square root, and then negative 3 minus the square root.
and they're both divided by 2. So I made this comment just a minute ago, but when entering answers in my math lab, the certain to simplify roots to lowest terms and into your answers without x equals. So they're just wanting the, the solutions only, not the x equals and then the answer. And make sure that you have your answer separated by a comma. So in other words, you'll type in negative 3 plus 3 squared 3 all over 2, comma, negative 3 minus 3 squared 3 all over 2. And that will be the solution to this last example. Okay, so that was called solving a quadratic equation using the square root property. Now we're going to talk about completing the square method which is the third way you can solve quadratic equations. So, in other words, how can you solve an equation that is written in general form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, whenever this trinomial does not factor? So notice that in the previous video we had all our trinomials, they factored very nicely. And notice that you cannot use a squirt property because it's not something that's being squared on one side and a non-zero number on the opposite side of the equation. Whenever this happens, you cannot use the zero product principle, which means you can't factor it very easily, so you can't set each factor equal to zero. However, what you can do is convert the equation into an equivalent equation that can be solved using the square root property instead by a method that's called completing the square. So let's talk about the steps for completing the square. So here's how it works. Let's say you have a binomial and it has 1x squared plus b times x, so some number times x and b is the number. So this is called a binomial because you only have two terms. If you add this number to this binomial, so take the b, take half of it, so that means you take half the coefficient of the x term and then you square it. So you take b divided by 2 and you take that number and you square it. If you take x squared plus bx and you add this number, then you get what's called a perfect square trinomial. And those perfect square trinomials, they do factor. So here's what happens. You have x squared plus bx, that binomial. You add in this b divided by 2 all squared. And then this becomes a trinomial. It's a perfect square trinomial. It means it does factor and it's a perfect square. So it's x plus b divided by 2 all squared. So it's x plus b divided by 2 times x plus b divided by 2. The same factor occurs twice and that's why it's called a perfect square because it's being squared. So just a note, when adding a constant term to one side of the equation, so if we add this special number b divided by 2 all squared, so that becomes a perfect square trinomial, do not forget that whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to add that same number to the opposite side of the equation. Okay, so let's talk about example three. We're going to solve these equations by completing the square and then also the square root property. So number one, the equation is x squared subtract 6x equals negative four. So let's talk about why you actually need to use completing the square. Well, let's try factoring because we can't use a square root property not one side is being squared. So let's add the 4, make sure that the equation is written in general form. So x squared subtract 6x plus 4 equals 0. So notice that it's a quadratic equation and it's written in general form. And there's three terms, so it's a trinomial. Let's see if it factors. So what are two numbers that multiply to 4 and the same two numbers need to add to negative 6? Well, I can't think of any whole numbers that do that. So this does not factor easily. 
So that means we need to use completing the square so that we can solve this equation because factoring doesn't work very easily. So here's how completing the square works. So off to the side, this is scratch work where we're going to figure out what do we need to add to both sides of the equation so that the left side will become a perfect square trinomial. So remember how this works. You take the number b, which in this case is the coefficient for the x, negative 6. You divide by 2. So b divided by 2 becomes negative 3. So negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. And now you square this number. So you square negative 3 in parentheses. So b divided by 2 all to the second becomes negative 3 in parentheses all to the second, which is 9. So that means you need to add 9 to both sides of the equation. So go back to the original equation. x squared minus 6x equals negative 4. Add 9 on both sides of the equation. x squared subtract 6x plus 9, this number that we, complete, we found out from completing the square, is equal to negative 4 plus 9. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, make sure you do the same thing to the other, because otherwise the equation will not be equivalent. So now you have x squared minus 6x plus 9 on one side, and you'll have 5 on the other side of the equation. Okay, let's see what we actually have done. Let's see if we can factor the left side of the equation x squared minus 6x plus 9. What are two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to negative 6? Well, the numbers at work are negative 3 and negative 3. So this gives you x minus 3 times x minus 3 equals 5. Well, it's called a perfect squared trinomial because you have the same factor occurring twice. So it's x minus 3 all to the second power that equals 5. So notice what we've actually accomplished. We took a quadratic equation, we rewrote it into general form, and notice it didn't factor very easily. But we added this number 9 on both sides of the equation so that the left side becomes something squared, x minus 3 all squared, and the right side of the equation is non-zero. So now you can use the squirt property. So remember how the squirt property works. You want to take the square root on both sides of the equation because you want to cancel out the square power. So square root, the left side of the equation, x minus 3 all squared is equal to, remember the plus or minus, plus or minus, square root of 5. So the square root and the square will cancel each other out and you'll have x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus square root of 5. And we know that there's two equations here. There's really x minus 3 equals positive square root 5, and x minus 3 equals negative square root 5. So write out both equations. x minus 3 equals the square root of 5, or x minus 3 equals negative square root 5. And solve both equations separately. So to solve for x, add 3 with both equations. So you'll get x is equal to 3 plus square root 5, or x equals 3 minus square root 5. And those are your two solutions. So notice the reason why the equation didn't factor very easily is because we couldn't find whole numbers that multiply to 4 and add it to negative 6. It's because these answers have radicals in them. And so it's not as easy to find these numbers when, they have, when they're in radical form. Okay, let's try one more using the complete and square method. So number two, let's say x squared subtract 8x is equal to negative 13 this time. Well, let's just figure out, does it actually factor? Because if it factors, then it's going to save us a lot of work. We don't have to actually complete the square unless it doesn't factor. So add 13 to the left side of the equation. x squared minus 8x plus 13 equals 0. And so it's a trinomial. And this equation is in general form. So find two numbers that multiply to 13, and the same two factors need to add to negative 8. Again, it's not going to be whole numbers. So does not factor easily. Again. That means your answers are most surely going to have radicals in them. So some scratch work again. Complete the square. 
take the coefficient in front of the x, which in this case is negative 8, divide by 2. So take negative 8 and divide by 2 and you get negative 4. And now take negative 4 and square the whole number. So b divided by 2 all squared would be negative 4 all squared, which is 16. So that means you need to add 16 to both sides of the equation so that the left side becomes a perfect squared trinomial. So go back to the original equation. x squared minus 8x is equal to negative 13. Notice that the x terms need to be on one side together and the non-x terms need to be on the opposite side to be able to use the complete square method. So add 16 to both sides of the equation. So you'll have x squared minus 8x plus 16 is equal to negative 13, and then also add 16 on the right side of the equation to make sure that you have an equivalent equation. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the same thing to the other side. So this gives you x squared minus 8x plus 16 is equal to 3. And so now let's try factoring the left side of the equation. What are two numbers that multiply to 16 and the same two factors add to negative 8? Well, there are two. It's negative 4 and negative 4. So you have x minus 4 times x minus 4 is equal to 3. And so why is it called a perfect square trinomial? It's because you have x minus 4 occurring twice. And so that is x minus 4 all to the second power. That equals 3. And so now, notice it's exactly in the form that we need it to be in to use the square property. One side of the equation is being squared and the other side of the equation is non-zero. So take the square root on both sides of the equation to cancel out the square power. So square root x minus 4 all to the second is equal to, don't forget about the plus or minus, otherwise you'll only have one solution instead of two. So you have plus or minus square root of 3. So there's that radical of the reason why the original equation did not factor. So then you'll have x minus 4 after the square root and the square cancel out is equal to plus or minus square root of 3. And so there's two equations, x minus 4 equals square root of 3 or x minus 4 equals negative square root of 3. After you add 4 on both sides of the equation, you have 4 plus square root of 3 or x is equal to 4 minus square root 3. And again, you have two solutions to the quadratic equation. So these two examples give you an idea of how to use complete the square method. It's used whenever the equation can be written in general form, but it does not factor, which means that you need to complete the square, find the number that you need to add on both sides of the equation so that the left side of the equation will factor as something squared, and the other side of the equation will be a non-zero number, so you can use the square root property. Almost certainly, when you use the complete the square method, you're going to have radicals in your answer. If you do not have radicals in your answer, that means you could have factored instead of using the complete the square method. So up to this point, we have three different methods on how to solve a quadratic equation. There's solving quadratic equations using factoring, which is very quick if you notice that you can factor. We also have solving quadratic equations using the square property. And now we have solving quadratic equations using completing the square whenever an equation does not factor very easily. So this is a good place to stop this video. If you have any questions about the square property or completing the square methods to solve quadratic equations, please let me know. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about solving quadratic equations using the quadratic formula and also talk about the discriminant.